All right, so uh, so I'm one of these loony projects, I presume, uh, and and it's not only going to be a talk in a talk. It's going to be not only two talks, one now, one later. It's going to be also a talk in a talk this time. So please bear with me because uh, being a music professor and uh, kind of interested in improvisation, uh, we kind of start with a theme, then we jump to another theme, then we come back, and you know. Uh, so um, I trust they do to kind of uh, take that spirit and and. Um, see where where we actually had it and um, um being music professor and being that on title might be a little misleading because this is technology that really started from uh from a musical uh, endeavor musical composition thing where we wanted to engage audience during during a performance uh, but it ended up being funded as a more serious uh, research that's supposed to help people uh uh, get involved not only during uh, operas or films, but also during um, um, more structured presentations like uh, talks that you will see in this symposium. So the Provoke um, uh, website or the Provoke portal is actually your interface with, with the ongoing talks. So uh, to experience that, you would actually um, need to either have a laptop or a cell phone. We do have a portable version. And uh, you go to provoke.ucsd.edu, and this is what you will see on your laptop. You will see a mobile version on your on your uh, smartphone. Um, and uh, the purpose of this, uh, it kind of reminds of, of Facebook, right? I mean, like this is uh, at least for people kind of um, uh, working out their uh, skills of social media today. And those who have kids actually have no other choice but to work this out. Uh, this is kind of the layout that many people use. You know, there's, there's your wall, this is your uh, blackboard or whiteboard, whatever it is, and, and, and you post your ideas and comments. So, so the idea is not only to make this as a feedback to the, uh, as a response technology, because there, there are such things existing um, in the... Um, for classroom teaching and stuff. Uh, and this is done, this project is done as part of a, a center that um, is uh, actually developing technologies for entertainment and learning. So you could see the learning applications, but the entertainment, entertainment applications are supposed to be uh, actually get, having the audience, like a hyper audience, having people participate during a performance if this was a film or if this was a, a live musical performance. So uh, I'll just say a few words about the center and then come back and explain this technology. So uh, so this is the Center for Research in Entertainment Learning, and, and this is the pr first project that we are presenting is this one. Uh, you will have another talk from one of our members about Uncanny Valley coming up. Uh, but here are some, some images from these, this older musical uh, interactive and video performance where these people are actually, they're not in the learning situation, they're actually uh, attending a musical event. And they have laptops and they uh, can see and browse images which are related to the topic of the performance of the story. Uh, and they can chat and they can interact. And this is another setting where you can see actually how they can control in some sense the backdrop. It's kind of an info backdrop which has these theatrical um, applications or potential uses as basically um, somebody being immersed in a story not only through the storyteller, but also through the whole setting that provides additional information, additional background images, visualizations, and stuff, and also communicating with the audience. So somehow, I mean, the the, the motivation for this concept came from maybe the story itself that was done there, which was based on a Talmudic story. And in Talmud, as, uh, the way that the pages lay out, the way, the way it's written, it's actually a story to be uh, more of commented and uh, or story to be discussed than a story to be only listened. Um, so this is kind of the, the larger motivation. So what we have here is not only a chat, okay? It's not only this microblog thing. Uh, of course, there are some, some polls here. And my first talk, which will be a talk inside the talk, will deal uh, with another research that we are involved in, uh, and this is about musical emotions. So this is why the questions are about musical emotions, but this is kind of a, the talk about the musical emotion will be kind of a, a, a trial run of the system. So how the system works. Uh, you um, can log in and actually provide uh, your own details. You can just go on online and you'll be assigned a guest user and number or your guest username. 
But then the question is, uh, well, you express some ideas, you express some uh, uh, some interest or questions that uh, are related to the topic. So um, what we requested all people who participate in the CSRO section, in the CSRO uh, presentation day, uh, is also to provide us with contents which are related to the talk. Because no talk and no performance is just that isolated event. It's actually a bunch of related articles. It's the whole info set. It's this whole information world that, that encompasses your talk and encompasses your performance, the story, the film. So what we do is um, we run a text analysis. Okay, We use some web, serv web services, and now we actually are experimenting with our own um, uh, natural text processing methods to analyze the contents of the comment. Now, once the, once the content of the comments are analyzed by the computer, which is actually running in the background, it goes and tries to find the most appropriate answer, in some sense, in two sets of articles. One are the recommended articles, which is a set provided by the, by the person who opens the chat room, by the person talking. So I provided a bunch of articles. Other people in the CSRO talk were, were asked to provide articles. And then there is also the open search articles, which is the blogosphere, the, you know, the Google News, anything outside of the world of that specific author. Now, your role as an audience, I mean, you can, of course, go and uh, find out that, uh, for instance, here we had already one recommended article posted through the trial run. And you can go and, of course, you can look at these articles. They will open up. You can see these pages, OK? You can go back. You can, of course, bookmark them if you want for the future. But then you can also promote. You can promote articles that you like. The, these are the open search articles. And the open search, in this case, some of them are not related to music, although the talk was designed for music. This is more for natural language processing, which is kind of related to, to some aspects of the technology, but not really about the music. You can vote, okay? You can promote these articles. These promoted articles is kind of a way to use the crowd, no, the crowdsourcing, you know, the, the, the wisdom of the crowds or the intelligence of people to filter out through the non-perfect way this system works. So it helps us also to... Um, teach our algorithms. Actually, everything is logged, so we can actually use these comments eventually to improve our algorithms by knowing what's right or wrong, because this is really a difficult situation. These are like ad hoc situations. I mean, you have a story. It's not an expert system that you can, can have a bunch of people develop for, for, for months or years. People come up, they do their research, but, you know, what they can tell you is about their work and the world that surrounds them. They give it to us. We kind of create this ad hoc expert system where the audience can actually help the system work by promoting comments. And of course, we can push and we actually create polls that are related to the questions of that specific talk. So you will see these interfaces change. Now, what you have on the main screen is my personal view or your personal view if you're using your laptop. But then there is also this shared canvas, which is kind of a summary. This is what you see on the left. So while you will have other talks going on, so if I would have switched, I think I'm running out of time because we're kind of a little short. And you know, uh, but let's say somebody runs his other talk here, okay, being there the provocateur project, and he wants to speak about the future of music. So now this is the talk inside the talk, but this is kind of a trial run, okay? Well you will still see that other interface. You will still be able to comment, see other people comments. And here you see this kind of a back channel running. You see the live feed. These are the comments that other people are posting. It's the most promoted comment, the comment tags. So just to help you kind of uh, throw in some questions in, okay, and, and polls actually are there also to help you kind of be creative during my talk. And this is, yeah, this is split attention. This is today's world, right? This is, this is how you know, I have to deal with my kids. So for instance, can computers perceive musical emotions? Okay, well, you, you have to microblog it. You, you have to kind of to chat. It's not questions. These are not queries. This is, these are natural kind of thoughts that you put in. And this is why we need artificial intelligence. We need our natural language processing for this kind of interaction, okay? And we're also developing some technologies for more natural and gestural interactions with music and other emotional uh, ways. But 
in this case, well, can computer perceive musical emotions? Well, you can just express yourself. And what the computer will do, okay, it will actually find for you the most related article on this topic, okay, from my set, from the open world set. And other people can actually like or dislike your comment, and they can promote this, so you can kind of see what the computer and the other intelligence, um, you know, the human intelligence, the machine intelligence suggest. So, you know, just, just to help you think about the topic, well, I mean, are we really caring about emotions in music? Or this is kind of a more general notion of, of aesthetics. Well, you see, I mean, everything is semantic networks. I mean, we, you need to kind of to decide what it means to be pleasing, what it means to be beautiful, aesthetics. Is, is, it, is it aesthetics or music that you want to do? You know, people explore computational models of aesthetics in, in the arts. They use uh, compression and, 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 and entropies to, to make uh, aesthetic, automatic aesthetic judgments on images. And we do this also analyzing basically predictability of musical features in the music. So you can think about how computer can help us uh, understand emotions by actually creating anticipations. And, and, and we, we actually tested this with, with audiences. And uh, here is an example of an experiment about music and emotions where you can actually analyze statistics of audio features and try to compare this to human judgments of familiarity and emotional force. So, I mean, this is kind of the talk about musical emotions that is supposed to provoke your thoughts about musical emotions. I didn't tell you much except for the fact that, yes, we do, we use that. It has interesting applications. You know, uh, if you want to improvise with, with the computer, here are some examples of people, or maybe I can switch to some other, you know, uh, uh, other applications where we think that this kind of a world where the computer analyzes the contents and the computer actually can help you be creative by you inputting something. It could be your comments, it could be your gestural improvisations, it could be clicking buttons, and we have uh, one, of the, one of our graduate students is working on kind of mobile musical group improvisations where we actually streamline the interface to the people on their cell phones and, and people can improvise. But right now you can see this troubled friend of mine, Gerard, from Paris, who, who's using our system. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, joint system that we developed for many years, and he's improvising on top of the human improviser. So maybe if he he wouldn't be he would need to be so troubled if the computer was a little bit more more uh, intelligent. It would know that there is actually you know some some sense of emotion in that music. It can recognize uh, whether the the music is sad or happy, or maybe it can just do some aesthetic judgments and say, well, you were playing too long for on this on this kind of musical material. Come on, you know get something new, it becomes boring, or it becomes maybe too exciting, or calm down, or, or get something. There. So, um, so this is the type of, of um, interactions between audience and machine intelligence and the content itself that we are kind of interested. And I'll just briefly mention a couple more projects because you're going to go around. Uh, you might see, um, uh, for instance, we have a, a little demo on the second floor which is part of um, uh, pretty much the same idea, but this time it's, it's running with the videos. So we have this little technology that allows us to, that allows people to comment and put their impressions together with videos, okay? And these things will be kind of flipping. Um, we use this also with some students uh, and, and, and the Six College TV station where they, they, can, they can actually put their own little funny or serious videos and uh, and as these videos go and move on, people can actually go and you have to be logged in. Well, I am logged in, and you'll you'll see some comments popping up. Uh, really, depending on the type of the video, these comments could be meaningful or not. But actually, what we do, we we run again the same text analysis, and the purpose of this whole thing is that you know you can actually see. Here we create a tag cloud from the comments. You can see which were the popular topics, but eventually we can cross-reference between segments of films. We can learn about the videos themselves. We can help people basically construct new remixes of video just based on some kind of a text proximity. You can input your text, textual description, and, and it will find basically segments that kind of correspond to what you want. So uh, this is pretty much, and, and really I'm um, going back to the Talk inside the talks. I'm going to the to the to the going up one layer, and this is this is actually what what uh, we're trying to do is see what are the comments, what are the, your ideas about music, uh, in this case, or, or whether computers can perceive music and emotions. But then, 
once we switch to the next talk, please comment on that talk, and I'll come back at 5.30 or at the end of the session, and we'll just give you general statistics. I mean, how many people commented on things? Uh, we will look up at what were the most promoted articles, and um, they took the laptop, but I was going to offer that. It wasn't mine, but I was going to offer that to the person who makes most comments. So <laughs> we don't have any prize, but just you know, participate in that as well. Okay, thank you so much.